Whether you're looking for answers to specific life questions or simply hoping to become the best version of you possible, welcome to the Mental Breakdown and Psych Reg podcast, where we offer insight, information, and strategies based upon research and years of practice as psychologists. So sit back, have a listen, and get connected with our hosts, Dr. Bernie Wilkinson and Dr. Richard Marshall. Welcome back. Richard, this week we are going to talk about a a challenging topic. And it's a topic that has been in the media uh, pretty broadly, Mm -hmm. at least for the past couple of months, the past three or four months. months. Um, But it is, it's an issue that's been around for a long time. And we've, well, we've talked about it. We've talked about talking about it. it. We've talked about talking about it. Yes. But we weren't sure how to approach it. What n- We weren't sure whether to approach it because right. two months ago, it was still very much an unfolding story. Right. So we didn't know where... We didn't have a clear idea of where it was going to end up. Right. What was going... You're right. 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 And so we weren't exactly sure about what um, perspective, what angle we wanted to, to take or whether we should take one at all because right. we had no idea where it was going to go. At, at least on the podcast. Right. At, at least here. Right. Right. Um, however, over the past couple of months, um, it has taken shape and I think perhaps it's time for us to, to weigh in on it. Yes. And, and, mm-hmm. and I think that it's, it, many more people are asking questions about it. Exactly. Um, many more people are, are, you know, come into sessions and talking mm-hmm. about it. Uh, so yes, I think it's, it's time. And, and there was a, a pretty specific reason why you, Right. When we were talking the other day, you mentioned that you you feel like it's you felt like it was time. Right. To me, it was time because I received a letter. Um, it was actually a blog post mm-hmm. um, from a person I know who um, has recently um, come out. I, mm-hmm. I'm not sure that's the right term. I don't mean sexually come right. out. Um, I mean she has told her story. Right. of being um, sexually harassed, mm-hmm. uh, that's the topic, of being sexually harassed. Right. And she has been, um, she has kept this uh, to herself um, for nine years, mm-hmm. nine or ten years now. And um, and that's part of the problem, right. is that the women who have been molested, abused, or assaulted have had to stay silent, but felt that they had to stay right. silent because they had no place to go. And we're going to talk more about that as we go through the week. But th- this is a, this person um, is a classic example of that, mm-hmm. a person who was molested um, as a youngster um, and wasn't able to do anything about it, was right. powerless to do anything about it, has finally come out now and told her story. And after reading her story, um, it emboldened me to say, perhaps it's time that we... Yeah. Uh, discuss this, open this up for discussion. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and I think it. I think it is time. I think it's it's an, an important topic because of some of the implications, mm-hmm. and uh, you know we, we've talked we have talked about it together a, a number of times right. because of uh, of some of our experiences in in our, in our profession. Mm-hmm. You know people who we have worked with and mm-hmm. we've commented multiple times about how surprising it is at the prevalence right. of some of these things, right. uh, the prevalence of uh, mm-hmm. abuse and harassment. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, so yeah, I think it's, I think it's time. And so we're going to start out this week with today's podcast, sort of just kind of building a, a, a background, a right. little bit of history, right. and then we're going to work through, uh, throughout the course of the week, talk about the, the current movement. Um, I have to admit that I'm a little bit hesitant to call it a movement because, not, yeah. because to me it's, you know, there are certainly people out there who have been advocating and, and, and talking about and pushing this for, for decades. Um, yeah. you know, th- th- so it's not, it's not like this, there's this, it's this new issue. Right. And, and again, that's probably, that's part of the reason why we're talking about the history to, a little bit today, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it's it's really people have been do, talking about this. I mean, this is an issue that has been around for a long, long time. Right. right. And, and to call it a movement makes me just feel like we're we're 
modernizing it and saying, oh, well, this is a, a brand new problem that we've never heard of before. Yeah, this, this didn't emerge at the end of the last quarter of 2017. Right. I mean, right. this, this is a problem that started many, many years ago. The other reason that um, I think it's timely is when the accusations first started coming out, um, very early on, Al Franken was mm -hmm. accused. Right. Okay. And th for those of us who have followed Al Franken's career, first as a comedian, right, and then as a politician, um, we have sort of these fond feelings toward Al Franken. And uh -huh. when he was accused, we thought, wow, is that really harassment? And he was an entertainer then. He wasn't mm -hmm. a politician. And is there a standard? And um, and and but but this gave me pause because that's not what this issue is about exactly right. and and that's what <clears throat> excuse me that's what the other reason why i think it's time to open up this right. thing for discussion right because while we might have some sympathy for the for some of the men who were accused this is not about the men who were accused right this is about a very long history of suppression right. of women um and women not having a voice right. and not being able to go anywhere with this right and, and, and there there are such um, it's such a spectrum right. of, of behaviors. And, and I think that it's important, um, you know, one of the things that I've certainly seen coming out more recently is, is the reminder that, you know, th there, there is this broad continuum between mm -hmm. appropriate conversations That's about, right. even about uh, mm -hmm. sexual behaviors or you know, attraction and things like that, yeah. all the way through to you know to the rape. most um, right. right heinous physical forms assault. of physical assault right. <clears throat> right and and so it's important that we keep those things in mind and as some some writers have been have recently pointed out uh, in in very sometimes very <laughs> eloquent ways and sometimes very direct and and raw right. ways you know th there sexual harassment is different than saying hey you look nice today those are two very very different things. And and you know there 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 are there have been people who have tried to say that you know with this with this new movement mm -hmm. um, that this <clears throat> takes away you know a, a person's right. uh, opportunity to compliment someone or to mm -hmm. and it's, you know that is uh, is such an issue. So well, the best advice one woman gave was, if you don't know the difference, mm -hmm. stay silent. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not sure, stay silent. Well, and, and, and the other thing is that um, someone else said, you know, if it's not something you would say with your wife present true. or with your, true. your your significant other present, mm -hmm. don't say it. That's um, probably a good rule of thumb. And, and so, yeah, I, I mm -hmm. think that that is um, a, a safe safe bet. But right. again, when we think about the history of sexual harassment, we're going to pull some information from this article posted actually a number of years ago mm -hmm. by the National Organization for Women. Um, we, we have two articles linked in the show notes one is for this particular article but the other is to uh harvard or i'm sorry yeah. yale law mm -hmm. uh that is a little bit more detailed history uh so you can check that right. out if you'd like but mm -hmm. this this issue has been around hundreds of years it if, has been really longer than that even. probably longer than that because many of the hundreds of years in the united states most of this exactly. is talking about the united states so it's been around <clears throat> present in the united states since the united states since before the United States was right. the United States. Right. And I think what we have to do is go back to some religious foundations right. because the, the major Christianity, Judaism, and um, um, Islam are all very patriarchal. Right. Okay. And, and everybody knows that. We're not, not bringing up anything new here, and it's not meant in any political or accusatory way. These are patriarchal religions. Right. And um, men have more rights than women mm -hmm. in most of these religions, certainly in the Catholic Church. You know, right. Women can't even be uh, clergy. And so it begins with that, that there is this division, this right. dichotomy. And it moves into economics. Right. So we go from religious foundations to economic uh, reality. Right. Okay. And for a very long time, women were not allowed to were not allowed to own property, mm -hmm. or they were in um, jobs where they were um, second class. They weren't mm -hmm. allowed to own property. They weren't allowed to be managers. They weren't allowed to right. be leaders. And so they were always in a subservient. They were subservient to men. Right. And many women found themselves in a position. Um, of having to be employed 
Mm -hmm. And so there was two ways to do that. One was marriage, mm -hmm. and the other was prostitution. Right. I mean, you had to exchange. Right. There had to be some sort of exchange here because you couldn't be in charge. Right. It, religious or economic, you couldn't be in charge. So you had to exchange right. yourself for, mm -hmm. um, um, for money. Security. Security. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, and we see that play out in colonial days. We see it play out in, um, um, in the industrial revolution. Right. Certainly these, these, um, impoverished women, mm -hmm. women and men, but impoverished women would come here and they would have to work in menial tasks mm -hmm. and they were, many of them at a subsistence, subsistence level right. and they had to tolerate whatever was dished out because they right. needed the job. Absolutely. Whether it was occurring in a mine or a factory or a house. Um, certainly the whole history of slavery is one of mm -hmm. taking advantage of women. Um, right. um, women had no, um, right. female slaves had no rights. They were treated as property. So we have this long history right. of um, uh, exploitation of women. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that because of that, and, and I, I read an interesting post um, on, and I'm, honestly, the reason that I have, didn't include it in the show notes is because um, I'm still working my way through it because it's a really long, detailed post that was uh, posted on someone's Patreon page. Um, but one of the points that she, she makes is the relationship between you know the, the idea of the glass ceiling, right? Mm. We have the, we have the glass right. ceiling, and the pointing out that many times women who are working their way through a, a comp up in in a company, right. once they experience sexual harassment, once if they haven't had a voice, if they don't feel as though they can do anything about it, they mm. often quit. Instead uh -huh. of instead of saying something, they quit. Right. And so because of that, women have often had failed to have the opportunity to work their way up to management positions or, or leadership right. positions because right. they don't stay at a job long enough because these, these sexual harassment behaviors happen. Right. Um, and, and that, that's true. So they, that, that statistic falls out of the picture. Right. You, you never, we don't have any way of tracking that. Right. Right. You know, women who just quit because right. they get discouraged. Exactly. You know, they, they become sort of, um, uh, sort of, under management, um, mm -hmm. you know, you know, shift managers and, and right. things like that. So they're not at the top of the managerial food chain, mm -hmm. but at, no. you know, as soon as they get there and, and if there's, they're experiencing some of these harassing behaviors, right. you know, they end up quitting. And so they don't ever have the opportunity to move up. Because, and they would become part of the statistic of sexual harassment, but we right. lose those data. Right. We lose that data. Okay. So yeah. Especially. Well, the, the, the most, um, dramatic, severe, um, heart-rending um, case of uh, sexual harassment reported in, in history was um, a woman by the name of um, Hester Vaughn. I think her first name was Hester. Yes, Hester Vaughn. 1868, so right after mm -hmm. the Civil War. Right. She's a recent um, emigrant from, uh, immigrant from England, um, impoverished. Uh, she had come here uh, yeah. She married a man, came here, found out he was a bigamist, so she was left, and he went back to his first wife. Yeah. So she was left on her own, mm -hmm. scraping by, uh, got a job as a domestic. Right. Within a few years, found herself pregnant as a young, right. probably young teenager, teenager uh, young woman. Found herself pregnant when she, by the uh, owner of the home. Right. Her person boss. she worked for. Right. Mm -hmm. And so um, he he fired her. Right. So she... So, uh, and she had no other source of income in those years. You either worked or there was no government programs to take right. care of people. And so um, she was pregnant, lived in this dingy little um, hovel, and gave birth to the baby, and the baby died. The authorities found her and the baby. She was arrested for infanticide and sentenced to death. Yeah. And the only thing that saved her life was a, a woman's movement at the mm -hmm. time. Some early feminists got together and uh, took to the streets yeah. and um, demanded that, that she not be punished, that she be released and was pardoned yeah. by the governor, I guess. Yeah. Um, and that was the only thing that saved her life. Right. So um, talk about, I mean, this dramatizes the, yeah. the plight of women, not only uh, their employment plight, but their legal plight. Absolutely. Okay? Um, and so this is the, I, I think the most tragic or the most um, um, uh, heart rending 
um, notion of this. Um, yeah, one of the at least one of the early ones, right? One of the early ones, right. And, and, and over the course of the uh, over the years, you know, we have certainly different examples of of harassment, and but it wasn't until what the nineteen mid nineteen seventies that the word sexual harassment. Yeah, it was nineteen seventy something. Yeah, nineteen seventy five. That the word harassment was ever even that's right coined. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it continued to be a problem. And what, what's fascinating to me is that, again, over the years, we have claims of sexual harassment and things like that come up. But while they, while they sort of were flashes in the pan, mm -hmm. you know, they, they quickly get right. dismissed and moved That's aside. Right. You know, I, I, think, I think about the, the claims, what was it in the 90s? Was it with um, the Supreme Court justice... Um, and the woman, Clarence, that, Thomas. Clarence Thomas, and Anita Hill, right? And and you think about that whole situation. I mean, that was like a huge. It was a huge story, and then it and just it kind of away. went away. Went and away. he continued and, to be the Supreme Court justice. And and you're right. That's what you go back to 1868, and you have these women take to the streets. Right. Then you don't hear anything about it. Right. Then you go to the 1920s, and you go to the 1964, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 right. made discrimination in the workplace illegal, but you really didn't hear anything right. about it. Um, and then you go up to the 19, and, and then so we're, now we get up to the 1970s, and this whole, the, the phrase sexual harassment was mm -hmm. coined at Cornell University, mm -hmm. because a woman there, her name was Carmita Wood, um, was, uh, I think she was an office worker, or secretary or something, she was being sexually mm -hmm. harassed, and she asked to be transferred, right. and the university refused, and, right. um, and she was left, she was a, left as a victim. Yeah. And... Um, so women at the university um, uh, supported her, and um, one of the women invented the word sexual harassment right. to explain right. um, her plight. Yeah. So that was in um, the 1970s. Right. But again, like you say, it's 1991 before this issue comes up again, or at least most of us hear about it, and that was with the Anita Hill, right. um, the Clarence Thomas hearings. Um, also, in 1991, you have Anita Hill saying mm -hmm. that, and of course she was discredited. And, right. Okay. Uh, the Civil Rights Act was amended, and it was amended to allow women to um, seek legal uh, action, right. uh, jury trials for punitive damages if they were sexually harassed. So in 1991, you have 6,000 cases uh, that are brought to right. trial. And uh, seven million dollars was awarded. By 1996, you have fifteen thousand, so right. it's more than double in uh, in a five year period. Right. Twenty seven million. Um, however, by twenty, then again, you have this this lull. Right. And we get up to 2013. Well, I think in the in the mid 90s we had the whole thing with um, <clears throat> uh, Bill Clinton. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so again, but but interestingly that. I mean, th there was absolutely a, a sexual harassment tone Element, to that, sure. But it was, it really <clears throat> became something very, very different. It became more. It was much more about him right. than it was about th the victims. Right. You know, the, the, right. what happened with mm -hmm. the women and everything. Right. Um, you know, certainly the women were were speaking out about it and talking mm -hmm. about it. But uh, as far as the media and and most people are concerned. They were primarily focused on on the president, not right. on the women. And you talk, the argument always is, well, it was consensual, right? Uh, the American Psychiatric Association, probably, must be twenty years ago now, mm -hmm. at least ten years ago, um, came out with a statement that said it is never okay to have a relationship with a patient. It used right. to be that so many years had to go by, right? The American Psychiatric Association said it is never ethical. Right. It's never allowable to have it. And the reason is it's never an equal relationship. It can never be right. an equal relationship. Once you have a parent, a doctor-patient relationship, mm -hmm. it, you can't turn it into something else. It right. will always be right. un uneven. And so the argument that it was consensual, if there's a power differential, right. it can never really be consensual. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, so um, I think the whole consensual argument is, has right. nothing to do with it anymore. If there's a power differential, somebody's being exploited. Right, okay. right. But again, there was this lull <clears throat> in, in reports about right. sexual harassment for, for a, almost a decade yeah. or, or, or two until 2013. By 2013, 
something like five to 15% of women are taking sexual harassment cases to court. Right. Only did this very tiny group. Right. And of that, half of the, only half of them um, were, were judged to be in favor of women. Right. Okay? And so um, even by 2013, the other thing that I wanted to mention is um, there was a show on TV called Mad Men. Mm-hmm. You probably watched it. Didn't I you? didn't watch it, but I know about it. You know about mm-hmm. it. There were three things in mm-hmm. Mad Men that were striking. I didn't watch. I watched a couple of parts of several episodes. Number one, they smoked everywhere. Right. But this was an ad company that had tobacco companies. From the 19... And this was... The, 50s it was and set 60s. in the 50s Most, and 60s. Mostly right? the 60s. And so that was one. Second, they drank in their offices. They mm-hmm. had bottles of whiskey on display in right. their offices. And the third thing is, is the women were objects. I mean, right. those were the three things. So it was tobacco, alcohol, alcohol. and sex. Right. I mean, the women were exploited. They mm-hmm. they dressed in exploitive ways. They were exploited by the men. And there was this expectation right. that women would do what they were told. Right. Especially the office staff. Right. There, weren't, there weren't that many other advocates. They were all men. Right. Mad men. Mm-hmm. And so that was in the 60s. And so you see this, you see this, um, this ethic, this norm. This mm-hmm. is the way, this is just the way things were. Right. And boys grew up right. in the 60s and 70s assuming that this is how the world worked. Right, Okay. exactly. And so you get all the way up to 2013 and you still have women in this position where they have no voice. Prior, I think we're getting, probably getting ahead of ourselves, but we're going to talk about 1997, which is another pivotal year with Naomi Judd. Right. Okay. So yeah, we'll, we'll get talk into about that. that another day. Yeah. Okay. But but it's pretty recent right. that this um, uh, movement, though it has a very long history um, of subjugation and exploitation of women, mm-hmm. um, finally begins to emerge. Right. Um, right. In the in in this millennium, in the in the two thousands. Right. Okay. Yeah. So in tomorrow's podcast, we're going to bring it up to date for the most part right. um, and, and talk about specifically talk about the, um, mm-hmm. the Me Too movement right. and we're going to talk about how it has its roots in that 1997 um, uh, Naomi Judd um, situation and kind of talk about you know how, how it came to be that uh, this group of women were the <clears throat> Time Magazine People of the Year right. um, for, for last year, um, and we'll talk about that. You know who we didn't mention hmm. in the years leading up to 2000, hmm. and he just died this year, hmm. uh, last year, Hugh Hefner. Oh, yeah. And the role that mm-hmm. that played, right? Um, and that was in the 50s again. It yeah. was in that, that time where women uh, were very much um, right. objects. So, yeah. So Interesting <laughs> footnote. Exactly. So th- th- this is a bit of a challenging topic, but we're going to kind of walk through different aspects of it throughout the course of the week. And so uh, if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, perspectives about it, we would love mm-hmm. to hear from you. Um, and uh, we would uh, be happy to have a conversation about some of these things. Right. Uh, here, here we are two guys talking about this. And so certainly uh, there are perspectives that, um, that we just don't have because we are two guys talking about this. Two so. white men, and I guess some might take us to two white men talking about uh, this kind of an issue, but I think we're talking about it from from a certain perspective, right. um, and um, and we want to open up the discussion, yeah. and we welcome, as always, we welcome comments um, and criticisms, absolutely, uh, from listeners and viewers, absolutely. So, all right, that's it for today. Until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and forget to be afraid. Thanks for sharing this episode of the Mental Breakdown and Psych Ridge podcast. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to follow us on Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel where you will find all of our previous podcasts and much more. We'd be honored if you would become a patron through patreon.com where any donation you can manage will go to the development and creation of more content. Just visit patreon.com slash the mental breakdown for more information. Thanks again for listening. Have an awesome day and we look forward to being back in your feed tomorrow morning.